I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe, and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. Ahoy, Bashikni. A few weeks ago, I received a question from a viewer. For his privacy, we'll call him Tomáš. And I've been thinking about his question pretty much every day since then because it's very personal and I didn't have an easy answer. And because I couldn't get the question out of my head, I thought it would be a good one to talk about today. His question was pretty simple. Do I ever have the feeling that I've sacrificed career or financial possibilities by moving from California to Prague? Tomas wrote that he himself was pondering this same question and wondered what I would do in his situation. First, a little background. Tomas was born and raised in California. He has Czech parents and he speaks Czech fluently and spent his youth traveling back and forth to the Czech Republic. For his master's degree, he went to a very prestigious university and he focused in a technical field. After he graduated, he started to feel apathetic about his life in California and so he moved to Prague and he got a job in a firm here and worked for two years. He lived in a great area and enjoyed his life. But he started to realize that his peers back in California were able to earn three to four times as much as he was able to earn at this well-known firm in Prague. So he moved back to California and got a well-paying job there. But he soon started to realize that he actually enjoyed his day-to-day -day life in Prague better. So what to do? Before we get to my personal take on Tomasz's problem, let's break it down a bit. Being the children of immigrants creates a duality, and that can be pretty challenging. You get the values of your parents' culture at home, but then when you go out in the world, you're absorbing the values of this new country's culture. I can't say specifically what his parents' values were, but based on the Czechs that I've come to know in this country, um, the Czechs have a more European mindset, which is work to live, not live to work. It's not that they're less ambitious in their career or financial pursuits, but I must say that the United States is famous for this success-driven mentality. On the other hand, the immigrant mentality in the United States is often more hardworking than Americans that have grown up there. His parents probably made sacrifices to raise him there, and he might carry the burden of their high expectations. They didn't sacrifice so much just so he could do just as well as they've done. He needs to do twice as well or three times as well. It's the American dream. I don't know exactly how his parents feel, but those are the two options as I see it. Next, he was not raised just anywhere in the United States. He was raised in California, where there are a lot of successful, driven, and wealthy people. He graduated from one of our best universities, so he was definitely surrounded by ambitious and intelligent people. Speaking from personal experience, when you grow up in those circles, you definitely have friends that become successful at a very young age and start startups and other businesses and you feel that pressure. Everyone around you is jumping from Google to Facebook to Uber and if you're simply satisfied staying where you are, you can seem lazy to them. So the first thing to consider is, which one are you? Live to work or work to live? Do you want to be a workaholic and become a huge success by age 45 and retire early? Or do you prefer to have an easygoing job where you can support a nice lifestyle, but you're not necessarily super wealthy. But this is important. When you're deciding which one of these value systems is yours personally, make sure it's yours, not your parents and not your peers. I can tell you that everybody who grows up in Los Angeles dreams of becoming an actor, and everyone who grows up in Silicon Valley dreams of starting a multi-million dollar startup. But these are the collective dreams. They're not necessarily yours. So be honest with yourself. 
Universities in the United States are extremely expensive and we don't even really consider it. We just take out massive amounts of debt thinking that this is an investment in our future. My degrees total have cost me around $110,000. This was paid for by me, by my father, my grandmother, my uncle, my mother, and my husband. I'm lucky that I don't have any student debt, but most Americans do have a lot of student debt, which forces them to take the highest paying job, even if it's not the one they want. I know Americans in Prague who must send back hundreds of dollars every month to American banks to pay off their student loans. And that's hard to do on a teacher's salary in Prague, but they make it happen. Tomasz, or perhaps his family, probably paid a lot of money for his excellent American education. Even if he doesn't have debt, he probably feels like this was a large investment in his future. And if he can make three to four times as much money at a job in California, how can he justify moving to the Czech Republic just because he can have a nicer life here? I have degrees in European history, international politics, and Central European business law. That and 25 cents ought to buy you a cup of coffee, as my dad says. No, actually, these are pretty good degrees if you want to work in government or in an NGO or in a law firm. I just didn't. Do I feel like my family and I wasted $110,000 on my education? No, because I was very interested in these topics. I still am. It taught me how to write and to be analytical and how to debate. I'm a much more informed person because of it. And without all of that knowledge and studies, I would be a really boring person. And these videos would be pretty boring and you probably wouldn't be watching. So each person must decide for themselves if the time invested in their education or their previous work is worth continuing, even if they don't want to do it, or if it means they must take the highest paid job offered to them. And perhaps Tomas is totally passionate about his chosen field. And the firms in California offer him the opportunities to grow and to be around some of the top people in the world. As an example, you can definitely be a film actor in Italy, but you probably won't get the opportunity to work with Steven Spielberg. For that, you have to move to Los Angeles. You can learn how to sew from your local seamstress, but if you want to learn couture, you really should go to Paris. If Tomas wants to be at the top of his field and the firms in California offer him that opportunity and exposure to grow and the firms in the Czech Republic don't offer that same opportunity, then that's an important factor in his decision because fulfilling work is a really important part of one's joy and satisfaction. Personally, I didn't have the same feeling towards my work. It did not inspire me or compel me to sacrifice other things. I liked the money. I liked the opportunity for growth. I liked what other people thought of my job, but the job itself was not worth it. You have no idea what might happen to you in the future. You might keep that high paying job and save a lot of money and become the hero in your family when someone really needs financial help. And helping that family member will have been worth having this job and living in, in the United States. Or perhaps you stay in California and you meet your future partner and that person doesn't want to move to Prague and so you're stuck. Moving with a partner and with children is a lot more complicated than moving alone. So maybe the best advice is go to where you want to be eventually and you'll find your partner there. Finally, let's get to what appeared to be Tomasz's main debate, which is the money. Should he earn three to four times as much living in a place he didn't really want to, or should he move to the place he wanted to and earn a lot less? It's not fair to give those salary numbers without taking into consideration all the other costs of living. According to the Numbio Cost of Living Index, which I heard about on Arepas for Dinner, thank you very much, Tomas would need to earn 184,000 crowns per month in the United States 
to have the same standard of living that he would have in Prague, earning 70,000 crowns per month. So it takes 263% more money in California to have the same standard of living as in Prague. So instead of thinking that his friends in California are earning three to four times as much money, he must consider that their money is worth a lot less when considering the square meterage of, of a house you can buy or the cost of restaurants and concerts and parking and everything else. 70,000 in crowns in Prague will get you a very sweet life. I have another video about things that cost me less in the Czech Republic but actually add to my quality of life and I'll link it above. Secondly, there are things that you can't really put a financial value on. Maybe Tomasz is a surfer and I gotta say, he's gonna have a hard time surfing in the Vltava. Or maybe he loves to travel internationally and it's gonna be a lot more expensive to travel from San Francisco to France and Spain and Italy than it is from Prague. So these factors are intangible um, and totally personal, but it's something that he needs to consider. Do I regret giving up my salary from the United States? Sometimes. But I wouldn't be earning that law firm salary in Prague. I'd be earning it in Los Angeles, where a bottle of wine costs 40 to $50, and rent for a one-bedroom apartment costs $2,500, and every other cent I made went to my car and car insurance. So while I might feel proud about that number I was able to earn, my income in Prague is just as good relative to the standard of living. What I actually regret is not saving more of that salary for when I moved to Prague. One thing I did not mention is that Tomasz is the ripe old age of 25. I know. I'm very impressed that he's having these big thoughts about his future and his finances at 25. But at 25, you really have so many options in front of you. You can easily take advantage of both of these worlds. Trust me, you have time to do both. Just be smart about it. Here's what I mean. There's an assumption that earning three to four times as much money means that you will have three to four times as much savings. But that's often not the case. When everyone around you is buying a new car and eating out five times a week and taking expensive vacations or renting a flat in the center of the city, it's easy for you to spend more money than you normally would just to catch up, just to do what seems normal. This is especially true if you have a high paying job, but a low satisfaction level. You can use money to sort of um, make yourself feel better, at least temporarily. On the other hand, if you make a plan to earn that high salary, but to live way below your means, and you stick to this plan, in 10 years, when you're younger than me now, you will have amassed a very nice nest egg that you can then move to Prague with, and it will give you so many options. You can buy a nice flat, you can buy a hatta, you can buy, you can buy an investment property, you could travel more, you could help your family or even work at a job that pays less, but which you enjoy more. The tip is to not let the high cost of living all around you trick you into living a high cost of living lifestyle. 10 years may seem like an eternity, but in fact, it is not. It's gonna go by like that. And with a solid plan on how you can get to the life you want, your 35 year old self is gonna thank you. Our start in Prague was a lot smoother because we had saved money. We were able to get the flat we wanted. We were able to wait and find jobs that we wanted. Although it would have been great to move to Prague in my young, energetic 20s, I would have been broke and my options would have been limited. So Tomasz, thank you for your question. It was a rewarding experience for me just to think about it. And I hope my answer resonated with others. If you like my channel, the best thing you can do to thank me is to subscribe and to send one of my videos along to a friend or family who might enjoy it too. Tak, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!